In today's lecture we will look at some sample SIPOC diagrams. The first sample diagram will demonstrate SIPOC at the highest level, the process is the business itself. The second diagram will be featuring an automated process. And, the third diagram will be illustrating a people-powered factory process and includes enablers. First, here looking at a business-level SIPOC diagram sample. This diagram shows the SIPOC for a mid-sized printing company. The printing process is initiated based on the orders or customer specifications. Then other inputs needed for the printing process like paper, ink, designs are collected from the suppliers. In this case the suppliers are paper vendor, ink vendor, copy and print machine provider, and the customer himself supplies designs and sometimes materials. Now the process begins when the company receives order, then after layout designs, they print designs, finally deliver the printed product. The outputs of the process are business cards, brochures, banners and signs, mailers, and letterhead. It's a very high level, simplified support that shows how customers and vendors provide information and items, the printing company then turns those inputs into products such as printed business cards. The final product goes to individuals, businesses, and marketing professionals who place the order. Most of the time, a Six Sigma team won't deal with a business level SIPOC diagram. However, if the team includes members from outside the division or company, such as vendors or consultants assisting with an improvement, then starting with a high level diagram can help those outside of the business understand the overall goals of the company. After that, here looking at a sample SIPOC diagram of an automated process. This diagram represents an automated process in a mail order pharmacy. Here, the bottle sorting machine, the label machine, the prescription software, ink and label vendors are all suppliers for the inputs needed in the process. They provide, unlabeled bottles, data for labels, labels, and ink for printing. The process starts with choosing the bottle size, then after printing the label, and affixing the label, the final output is a labeled bottle, which goes to the customer which is a bottle filling station. The process in question puts labels on bottles that are to be filled with corresponding medications. The scope of the process is only the labeling of the bottles. Because this is a process within a chain of automated processes, almost all of the components are machines, processes, and things. Prior to labeling, a machine sorts bottles by size. That machine feeds the labeling station as needed. After the labeling is done, another station fills the bottles. At last, here looking at a sample SIPOC diagram illustrating a people-powered factory process with enablers noted. This SIPOC diagram illustrates how enablers might be recorded for your process. The process in question takes place in a factory that makes furniture. In this process, a person attaches legs to a bar stool on an assembly line. Like the previous samples, here also we can see the suppliers, inputs, process, outputs, and customers of this process. For the purposes of this illustration, leg attachment is the last step in the completion of the product, which means the product moves from the leg attachment station to packing and shipping. Here we can see that enablers have been noted. Conveyor machine that moves products, and drill machine for application of screws are the enablers of this process. Without the conveyor machine, the people in involved in this process would have to move items manually. The conveyor isn't 100% required for legs to be added to the stool, but it enables the process to move at a more efficient pace. A case could be made that the drill isn't required either screws can be installed manually but it's certainly what enables the process to move at a speed required for mass production. With just this simple SIPOC diagram of a process, a Six Sigma team would already have some idea about where variation could be hiding, what drives efficiencies in the process, and how the process relates to the overall business. Whether working in a team or on your own, choose a process you know about and practice creating your own diagram. Pick a process associated with your business or a business example you have experience with. Use this templates to get started with creating your own support diagram of your business or process.